So let me jump to Vico Office. And um, as I said earlier, this is a single user interface. It's um, a full construction scope, so we have all of the different modules within the same user interface. It's um, essentially a, a, a dynamic way of viewing information and being able to um, only see what you need to see for that workflow that you're, you're actually working on at that point in time. So in the left-hand side, we have different workflow panels, and we can choose what we see for the progression of this data. Um, for example, if we were going to use Cost Planner, we could see um, the information from the project, managing the models, taking them off, and then using the cost plan, and then reporting on that information. Pretty simple workflow, um, and so on and so on. The, uh, the ribbon at the top is dynamically um, adjusted so that it will be relevant to the view set that you have defined in the center. And we can have many different projects in this one database. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have a tower project and we have a lab project um, that we can open and view. And we can list all of the information for many projects for our um, pre-construction and construction teams um, on a site, on a server, or potentially on a file-based system as well. It's the, where the server is represented on your um, desktop. Um, there's a help menu for you to run through all of the um, setup and understanding exactly what these um, each of the modules do and how we do, for example, um, the model manager UI, um, what happens in here, and so on and so on, what all of the buttons and everything does. So there's a very comprehensive help system. Um, for us, we're going to um, take a look at the lab building project. And um, for that, we will then open the project. So here we can click to open this project, and you'll see that it turns green, the dot turns green to say that that model is open. Uh, we can then, as I mentioned here in the panel, we can then set up whatever views we like to see of this data. So I'm going to set up a side-by-side -side view so that on the left-hand side, um, we're going to have the model manager. So I select the model manager. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to select the 3D view. So let me just make a bit more space for the 3D view. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to choose the 3D view and have a look at what models we have in our project. So. Um, the tools down the bottom here are our navigation tools. I can click on the um, orbit and view and drag and um, rotate and understand a bit more about the building. I'm going to just try and move that palette there. And then um, we'll set up and see which projects um, we've got in here at the moment. So let's take a look here and see in the uh, filtering where we have the substructure model. So if we filter just for showing the substructure model, we can see that this is um, coming actually from Archicad. Then if we add the structure, then we can see the structure. And at each point in time, we can obviously rotate and have a look and take cross sections, for example. If we take a, a dynamic cross section of the information. And then let's add the external and internal architecture. And let's add the site. And then let's add the mechanical as well. And there we go. So we can see now, let's go to the orbit command. And we can see lots of MEP on the roof. Um, this was the uh, model that I showed you earlier. So it should be familiar to you. It's a laboratory, so there's quite a significant amount of MEP in the, um, in, in the uh, penthouse where we have to make sure that this is all coordinated. So um, it, as I was saying, in the bottom we've got no issues um, and we can use the constructability manager to detect these issues, so the detection settings that we click. Um, we can compare many different things. So we could compare, and I must, so we're, we're delving now into uh, constructability and um, detecting clashes that are in this building model or model set that we have received and that we have um, added to ourselves. We can add comparison rules between certain la layers between the models or we could add certain elements. So we could say 
Um, for example, in this example, we're, shoot, we're choosing the walls and the uh, rectangular ducts of a certain system, and we can save this as a type of analysis, and when we hit the activate and detect clashes, it will then run the analysis, and hopefully this will be pretty quick to run. It runs the analysis, it finds the um, flashes, and then it stores them in the database, and it then shows them up in this list at the bottom, so we can see um, a list of um, maybe 10 or so issues that we've found, and uh, one thing I like to show is uh, from the column selector adding the element and type, so I can add that column in, and now I can see that I've got duct to wall clashes, and maybe let's get some more issues in there. So we've detected 11 clashes so far, and let's run another analysis for the pipe. Hopefully we'll have some more issues installed yet. Um, now we can see some issues, pipe and wall, uh, conduit, so this is conduit and this is rectangular duct. Um, we can click on these and at the moment it's just highlighting the issues. So that could be useful, um, but we can't see much at the moment without actually um, understanding a bit more and, and peeling away some of the building maybe. Um, so there are a few different um, methods that we can use to view this information. Uh, one of them is the, the automatic zoom. So if I select that, it will zoom to the area that um, is showing this clash between the duct and the wall. Um, but still, this is probably not um, too easy to understand what's happening here. So we could choose to isolate. If we isolate, we see just the two elements that um, have the clash. Um, maybe we want to see it in respect with the whole building. So there's a translucency mode which um, highlights just those objects and then allows you to see everything else. Um, but potentially if this was, and let me just um, build a situation where it would be slightly difficult to see what's, uh, what's clashing, what the problem is, um, we can use the translucency mode and then use what we call the auto reveal. And auto reveal, if I tick that, it peels away the, all the elements in front and um, uh, shows us where that issue is in relation to the rest of the building. So if I now rotate this building, if I just turn it around, you'll see it will peel away everything. Um, I like this view. It's um, really easy to start communicating um, what information you really need to in uh, a very understandable way. So um, we can see where that clash is in its environment um, and start to analyze it in a bit more depth. So, uh, and when we select each issue now, if we've got the um, commands ticked, then we can see that it will uh, automatically go to these locations. And um, that's quite a nice one. So we can see this issue here with a duct coming through um, and uh, it's hitting this wall and potentially, so this is on the roof, so maybe that's coming from a piece of equipment. Um, so let's just go back and ISA highlight mode. Yeah, so we can see this duct coming out. Maybe this is um, a piece of equipment that has a specific um, location for the for the outlet, which means that um, we probably have to have an extra bend in here or some form, uh, which will add to the cost. Um, maybe we uh, have to add um, a, a higher pad underneath, for example, um, to raise it over. Maybe we have to dart it over. Um, but we can analyze what the, um, what the effect is and uh, which one is the best result on the cost. Now um, we've found an, an issue that we really do think is an issue. Um, we start to promote these as constructability issues. Um, at the moment you see that there are 18 clashes that we have detected and uh, we have six constructability issues. Um, the way that we promote it is just right click the line and say, uh, mark as constructability issue, and then you'll see that this dives down to 17, and we have an increase to 7 in the constructability issues tab. So what we're doing is promoting this um, this item, this problem that we found, um, and now able to add more detail to it in the constructability review. We go to auto zoom, and we can see where the item is, 
and then we can start to um, actually analyze the issue and mark up um, a, a view of that item. So we can add a viewpoint and then we can start to uh, add, for example, a cloud around this so we can show where the issue is um, and um, then for example, add a, a free hand, this is where it is, point to it even. Um, and people can understand it and save different viewpoints and, um, and we can roll through those viewpoints. And these are the viewpoints that will then be reported in our report that, um, that I showed you before. So we could say this is a, a duct uh, clash with parapet, um, maybe move... Um, Let's leave it like that, the duct clash with parapet, and then we can rate this as maybe a medium severity. Um, say that it's the MEP um, as the owner, and say that it's pending resolution, and maybe add a comment to say uh, increase uh, pad height, for example. Um, and we can see when we click on each one where we're zooming and, and um, seeing all of the other issues and we can track through. So this one here we can see uh, that we have a, a, a vent clashing with a steel brace and um, we need to make sure that uh, the architect changes something here. Maybe we can move the vent but potentially it might affect something inside the building as well. So once we have this information and um, we are um, pleased to say that we have Caught constructability issues, and we have rejected um, the detected clashes that aren't potentially clashes. Um, then we can start to create reports on this information. So, if we hit the uh, create report button, this will open the report um, and the, the engine, and we can then go to edit a report in that engine. So, we have a uh, constructability report here, and if I uh, right click to edit that report, it will open up the report editor window. Um, pretty pretty um, except, exceptional capabilities in here, the report designer. Um, as you can see, this report has already been created with some uh, various parameters and um, the data is all driven. You see these little uh, database symbols, uh, cylinders, is showing where the information is coming from in the database. Um, so for example, here in the viewpoints, uh, we can see actually that this is a screenshot image um, with the annotation that we have captured um, and this will list out all of the items in our report uh, even put a picture I think in, in this example so this is the uh, project image that we saw on the my dashboard screen will be put in this place um, and we could do various things uh, we could put a, a nice chart in here and uh, the chart wizard comes up and tells us uh, what, what would you like to see Maybe it would be nice to have um, a, a 3D pie chart or something like that showing um, all of the items and how they are distributed between all of the different systems. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. Let me close that and show you an example. So I have a constructability report. Um, so this was just run. It takes a couple of um, seconds just to run it, but um, you can see here that the project name and the, the um, the picture and then all of the issues and the ones that I added with the constructability issues. As you can see here, um, vent clashing with steel brace, um, this was the item that I just saw in the, in the uh, software there. So this can be distributed um, to the project team um, if they need a copy that is not based on the project database.